Yo, what up guys, Mysterious here, and we're back with a how to beat Fizz video. And we're gonna jump straight into it, the strengths. Fizz, first of all, is extremely mobile. He has multiple dash abilities and it makes him super slippery and very hard to catch. He also has insanely high burst damage. Like the damage on his abilities is massive. And this makes it also makes him skill pretty well. And the numbers that he can dish out are, are pretty terrifying. Fizz is also one of the best snowballing champions in the game. If this guy gets one or two random kills, he will take over because then he suddenly gets lane prio. He can use that prio to pressure you for a solo kill or translate that with his different strength where he's good at roaming and he's going to translate that into one of the side lanes and it's going to be a menace to play against a Fizz that's strong. But what are his weaknesses? Fizz's weaknesses is he has low wave clear. Um, Fizz has the only wave clear ability that he has is like his E and his W helps him CS but it's not necessarily a wave clear ability but his E it's not going to be enough and when he uses it he is quite vulnerable in lane especially to getting traded upon because his E is the main ability that deals damage early and it's his wave clear ability so he has to always make a decision and it costs a shit ton of mana as well. <laughs> so Fizz is also very linear. You know exactly what Fizz wants to do. If he throws the ult, he goes on that target. If he um, if he can get a kill, he's gonna get a kill. If he goes in, he goes in. It's pretty easy to see what a Fizz is going to do. Um, and not only that, but it's only burst damage that this champion provides. It's not overtime DPS max health damage. It's only the burst damage. So he is not that good versus heavy tanks. And also in team fights, if he cannot get his, his combo onto a priority target, he's not going to be that useful. He's also pretty bad when behind. When Fizz is behind and he's not able to one-shot people, there's a big threat gone from the enemy team and Fizz is not going to do a whole lot. Offers no CC, offers very low wave clear, so he's just not going to be that useful. And he's also very ult-reliant. The main kill threat that Fizz had has and when he roams but also when he's in lane is all centered around his ult so if we keep our dash abilities to dodge his ult then it's going to be very hard for him to kill us so what does Fizz want to do Fizz is looking to kill you at all the time it's a snowballing assassin so this guy will make sure that his wave states are in the correct position to kill you that his wave states are in the correct position to roam and snowball the game. That's what he wants to do. So depending on the matchup, he either starts trading level one heavily, if he's uh, into a certain melee matchup, for example, but mainly into most control mages. He minimizes the level three, gets all three of his abilities, and then he starts just chipping away at your, at your health bar. Starts trading, trading, trading until you're in kill threat. Then he goes for an all-in and it's actually quite a high uh, health percentage what the all-in tre threshold is for him. So. He will look to kill you all the time. Same post level six. He will look to use his ult and cooldown uh, on either our own lane in mid or on the side lane. Most of the time it's gonna be bot. There's gonna be the most squishy members and that's where FaZe is gonna focus his attention. If he gets the tempo, if he gets the priority in the lane, he will go to bot lane and try to fish for a kill. So how do we actually beat FaZe? My Main tip, and it's a cheat actually, is just take bone plating. It really, really, really messes it up. And I'm gonna show you an example right now. And you can see in this example that Dopa just denies his trading pattern. It just fucks with the trading pattern from Fizz. That's why bone plating is so unbelievably good against him. Fizz has long cooldowns and uh, he has a trading pattern that just it's, it, takes a, it takes a while and it takes a good angle to get the trading pattern off. If he gets it off, it deals massive damage, of course, but bone plane really, really, really screws with that. So what else can we do to, to beat Fizz? We can also stack and hold waves. Since Fizz has very low control over the wave, we can either uh, stack waves, and when the wave is very big, he cannot really uh, all in us because he's gonna take so much minion damage. And if we hold wave, he's not really able to push out the wave and, and get it to crash because he has so little wave clear and if he uses his E then he's pretty vulnerable to a uh, trading up, up onto him. So the waves are, are really problematic for Fizz and once he's behind he goes down 20 CS, 30 CS, 40 CS, 
And then we're talking because then suddenly Fizz doesn't do a lot anymore. Um, avoid, short, avoid short trades, uh, as we said, like don't get put yourself in a position where he can just Q onto you, W, electrocute, and then possibly E with the slow and then out, or just E out instantly. Like um, it's it, it's like a, a ranged out attack range that he can use to get onto you. Try to avoid short trades as much as possible, unless we can extend the trade afterwards. Um, trading is usually in this guy's favor. So pin him in lane. We do that by good wave management. And if we pin him in lane, he's unable to roam to a side lane. And if he roams to a side lane with a bad wave state, he's going to lose a hell of a lot of mid lane. And that's going to put him behind of the curve. And especially if nothing happens on the side lane, it's just over for him. But if even if he gets something on the side lane, we're able to like um, deny him a lot of XP and, and gold in the mid lane himself. And then it's got, not going to be the biggest problem. And then finally, as I already said in his weaknesses, we just dodge his ult. A lot of champions have dashes nowadays. It's very hard for Fizz to hit the ult on max range if you have a dash, just hold the dash. Uh, for example, Yone with his E, we can always just hold the E and make sure that we dodge the Fizz ult uh, with it. And without getting hit by the Fizz ult, we're just not going to be dead in, in, uh, in that quick of a time. So which champions are good and bad into Fizz? Let's start with the good ones. We got Karma, Tristana and Kassadin. Why Karma? Karma, unkillable. Takes bone plating, uh, just regens up in lane, gets held, gets MR, uh, has perma wave prio against the Fizz, and Fizz cannot even assassinate targets in team fights. Karma is one of the best champs that you can pick into this champion, and Fizz is just gonna struggle all game. He's not gonna have a fun one. Why Tristana? Tristana has so much wave control that it's very easy for her to perma shove in the Fizz. Fizz has to respond to the waves all the time. And she also takes bone plating, so Fizz cannot really trade into, uh, into the Trist. If Fizz then ease out, Trist can always jump afterwards. And otherwise, the Trist can always hold her jump to just dodge the Fizz ult. So, like, it's not a fair matchup for, for the Fizz. Then Kassadin eventually, Fizz doesn't have the damage to just kill the Kassadin. Kassadin has a lot of dashes in this kit, a lot of uh, lane sustain versus this high AP burst damage that Fizz does. And he just outskills the Fizz massively. Then for the bad champions, we're here looking at immobile mages like Seraph and Lux that have no dashes and that generally don't want to take bone plating as well. If you get hit by one Fizz ult, yeah, it's, Fizz seems like the most broken champion in the game because he will one-shot you, uh, even through the likes of Barrier, like the, the, the ult and, 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 and his entire combo just deals a massive amount of damage. Why did I also put Yone in this one? Is because Yone kind of struggles into this... Uh, short trade style that Fizz does. And yes, Yone takes bone plating, but Fizz has more opportunities than every 55 seconds to just get that trade going into the Yone, chip away at his health bar, and Yone will probably die a few times if he just tries to walk up in CS. And this is why Yone is not the most opt optimal champion into Fizz. So right now we're gonna take a look at an example of how a control mage, Victor, beats Fizz in lane. All right, so for this vault, we have a Victor versus Fit Fizz matchup. And what we see is that the Victor takes Bone Plating, he takes Airy, and he takes Scorch. That means that he's looking to chip down at Fizz's health bar while also being extremely safe to getting traded upon. And what we just see is that uh, the Victor is just attacking Fizz anytime he tries to go up for CS. Fizz has to commit, of course, he has to walk up to get the CS, and Victor just starts booting him. And right now we see that Fizz is already in a massive amount of trouble because Victor is slow pushing a wave. He's not pushing fast. And every single time that the Fizz just wants to walk up and take his CS, he's just going to catch a Q to the face or an auto attack like this. And the wave is so far up in the lane that Victor can just walk up anytime he wants and he can just harass the Fizz when he tries to go for his CS. So this is an amazing, amazing position for this Victor right here. And we see that the Fizz is just getting chipped down bit by bit. And every single time that the Fizz just walks up, it's gonna get an ability to the face, out attack Q, and the HP bar starts to drop. So Fizz took Corrupt and Potion. And what we see is that Fizz do not has Teleport. So if the wave actually gets stuck in an uh, awkward position for the Fizz, he needs to take a bad reset. His extended laning is not that good. 
And when Fizz needs to take a bad reset, it's gonna lose a lot of XP, it's gonna lose a lot of gold. And if we get Fizz onto one, possibly two bad, bad resets, he shouldn't be able to play the game anymore. So we're definitely on our way to do that. We keep arresting. Uh, Fizz is down to his last scripting potion right here. And we're in the process of stacking a massive wave because the wave is stacking on our side all the way here. It's very hard for Fizz to walk up in CS and we're starting to create a slight CS lead. So Victor missed a few creeps here and there. Sadly, otherwise the lead would be enormous, but he's also human, so can't blame him that. So, because the Fizz is in a very awkward position right here, we see the bow plating coming in. Uh, the fire comes to gank and help the Fizz out. That's actually kind of saves the Fizz his lane a little bit. Not fully, but a little bit because Victor loses flash and the massive wave doesn't really crash. Fizz shares some XP and Victor now has the base because he's under a massive load of threat because Vi, uh, there's no vision of, of the Vi. So TP back and what do we see right now? Waves coming into us. Perfect, Fizz has no TP. So what we just do is we just hold it on our side and we freeze it. And Fizz is going to lose a lot of minions here. Let's continue. Fizz just lost an entire wave. Let's see if he's going to miss more. He just lost an entire wave. And now Fizz wants to get this wave in. So he has to use all his abilities on this wave to get this wave in. And Victor can now just harass him in the meantime. Yep, all these out attacks onto the Fizz. And just for trying to get this wave in, he loses a potion and half of his HP. And he's down in XP and CS already massively. So it's going to be very hard for him to even do something in this lane right now against the Victor. Especially because he still has the bone planning up right now. Like what is Fizz going to do if, if Victor just takes his distance right here? So Fizz actually went in for a base. Um, he lost like one or two, he lost like two creeps for basing. So he's down even more uh, XP. And this is just looking to be a disaster for the Fizz because he, he cannot go anywhere. Um, he's stuck in lane, otherwise he's gonna miss even more creeps. He's just gonna get poked down by the second. He cannot go in um, be because of the bone plating. So his only hope is a Vi gank. And that means that he's so dependent on the jungler and uh, that is just very hard for him to play the game. And Victor's landing every single E very nicely. So Fizz is just losing HP at the second. And right here, we can actually see that Vi opts in for the gank. He dodges the ult by respecting very well. He, can, he could feel the gank going. It's the only thing that can keep this Fizz from uh, not being doomed. And the wave's now pushing into us. What we do is we just hold the wave. We thin the wave, we hold the wave. We ult the face and we actually push it. That's also fine. We can now get a lost chapter. Amazing base regardless. And now we're extremely strong. Fizz hasn't been able to take a base yet. And look at the item disadvantage uh, for the Fizz. And the wave is now coming back into us. We can now just hold it. And with that hold, Fizz will never be able to push it out. He has no potions anymore. And he's going to lose so many creeps. Hakan is a little bit of inting. Sadly, he doesn't hold the wave here. So imagine if he holds the wave here, that would be amazing because then he could deny the next wave from the Fizz again. But he gets the E-upgrade and just hard stops it. That's also fine. And he gets a plate in, in the back end. And just the lead on mid lane, is, it's just so massive right now that the, the Fizz just hasn't been able to do anything. And he won't be able to do much this game um, coming up because he doesn't have the resources and the ability to one-shot someone. His damage is too low. He will just get poked down in lane and it's just going to be an absolute disaster for him. So I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have some questions, let me know in the comments. I thank you all for watching and I see you this week with a new video on why it's good to be camped. So see you later guys.